Hey, everybody, and welcome. Uh, we just got one or two more minutes here um, before we get rolling, just waiting for a last couple of folks to, to trickle on in. Uh, but thanks so much for joining our Safety HQ demo today. Uh, we realize that this is not only a busy time, but you know, a busy time in the day too. So we'll try and be as mindful as we can of time. Uh, definitely give us uh, a shout in the messages section or the chat if you have any questions as we go. Um, I'll have my contact information in here as well, so we can always go back and um, we can always go back and answer some of those questions on an individual demo if you'd like, or even over phone or email if you need there too. But uh, just give us one or two more minutes, uh, throw those questions in the chat, and I'll get to as many as I can at the end, and uh, we'll go from there. But we'll get started shortly here. Okay, cool. All righty. Well, thank you. Sorry, I got this. I'm sharing this PowerPoint on here. It's a little goofy. It's on my Teams, but uh, we can work with it. We're only on this PowerPoint slide for uh, one or two seconds here, so we'll just take a peek. Uh, my name is Eric Vitardi. I am uh, the regional sales manager, especially for Safety HQ. Uh, definitely been my focus since we acquired it as we being Foundation Software. Um, about a year ago and uh, for a couple of years before that too. So, um, you know, we're excited to share this with you for those of you that aren't familiar. And again, if you weren't here at the beginning of the, the presentation, if you have any questions, we would love to get to as many as we can. We want to be mindful of time here too. So um, shoot over any questions, but uh, my contact information is here below. Uh, you can also reach me in the middle of the presentation uh, as well, or after the presentation as well too. But Safety HQ, um, you know, what is it? Uh, we're going to today be discussing, you know, how we can handle inspections, JSAs, JHAs, assigning and managing tasks like toolbox talks, um, you know, those types of items, certification, a whole bunch of items here too. But we're going to go through a little bit of everything. Um, let's pop this guy open here. So Safety HQ. Uh, this is on my this is on my web browser here today, but this is what's called a progressive web app. So if we're using this in the field, we do have the option to use this. Um, you know, here's my little app here. I'm not sure if you guys can see it as I present this, but um, you can download that onto your device um, because it is an, uh, a progressive web app. We can use this in offline mode. This is kind of a goofy screen. I never really show it too much um, because of the fact that. It's just offline mode. Uh, it's, it's hard otherwise to disclose offline mode. Uh, for those of you that are foundation software users, um, this will connect up your jobs and your employees and in the near future, your equipment. But jobs and employees will sync up every night with your foundation software database. Uh, as projects progress, let's say we move a project from active to inactive, or uh, I shouldn't say inactive, I should probably say completed. It will automatically make those types of changes. You know, the, the relative changes for your employees as well will be changed. So really a huge time saver if you're using foundation software to save you the time and effort as far as that duplicate entry. Um, but other than that, yeah, let's let's jump right into Safety HQ. As I mentioned, progressive web app, we can use it. This, oh, that's the other thing too I'll mention. This also syncs up automatically when we get into a cell service if we're working in offline mode. And then the last thing that we'll mention here too is I am working on my laptop, but because this is a, a mobile application, a lot of people ask me, hey, well, is this gonna look different when I have it on my phone or my tablet? The nice piece is if you're working off of a tablet, whether it's Windows, uh, Android, uh, Samsung, whatever the tablet may be, Apple, iPad, this is gonna look almost the exact same. If you're on a phone, the experience is going to look very, very similar. Uh, this menu bar will go down to the bottom and then this dead space goes away on the left and right hand side too. So what you're seeing is pretty much what you're getting in the mobile experience. And this is designed for mobile first. So um, it's, it's intended to be used by teams in the field for sure. But let's start with this form section. Uh, this form section is fully customizable. Uh, we get this question a lot as far as, well, you know, I see that you don't have, like I don't have a crane inspection on here. Can we do crane inspections? Yes, send us the form. We will duplicate that form as best as we can. Most often we're really good about getting these forms to look and, and feel how you need it. Um, but the nice piece is, is this will go ahead and interact with your, um, this will go ahead and interact with your existing safety program. And if you don't have a safety program as is, not a big deal. 
we can uh, use a number of the templates that we have that have been OSHA reviewed and uh, that have been used by our clients or that we've built throughout the past as well too. So a lot of flexibility here on uh, these forms. A lot of people also think, well, you know, if you're customizing and you're building these forms on our behalf to match what we need, a good example is like JHAs. You know, if we need it for a particular general contractor, we need it for a particular, um, let me close that out real quick here. Um, or if we need it for a particular customer that wants it, you know, their JHA, JSA done on a particular format, not a problem. We can certainly do that. Uh, and that's included in your subscription. If you need to make a change, good example there is COVID. You know, maybe you have a particular job site safety evaluation form and you have to make some changes once COVID came up. And I know it's been a while now, but um, then the nice piece is, is we can always update and change those forms as you need to. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at a couple of those forms and see what these could look like um, in your experience. So back to the start. I go through my form section, uh, and this can be organized and customized. This might be daily, this might be job site, whatever we want to call it. But I'll start with the JHA as an example. You'll notice here everything's going to look very similar from one section to the other in Safety HQ. The nice piece is, is you're always going to use this big yellow can't miss it button as an add new. So I'll go ahead and add new. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select my project. I'm going to select um, some other information. It's going to populate some for me as well. On the next tab, I'm going to go ahead and select my tasks, right? These are custom to what you guys would select um, or what you guys would have. But based on what I've selected on the task area, it's going to populate what I have over here on my hazard types. So I always pick, you know, fall protection and environmental as an example. But based on those hazard types, it's showing me individual hazards. And this is especially nice of, hey, we're not doing excavation work today. You know, we're not, we're not bombarding the team or, or weighing them down with things that they may, need, may not need. So we select these particular hazards, again, customizable. And on the next page, you'll see I've selected fall protection and environmental hazards. You, these environmental hazards that I've selected on the last page, as well as the particular fall protection items, are all that we're really reviewing on the controls and the mitigation section. So you can imagine if your form's 10 pages long or if they have to normally write out all the controls, um, you know, or maybe you give them all the controls, but they have to cross off a whole bunch. What we're doing here is keeping them extremely focused, keeping them from pencil whipping these forms, and we're keeping them safer on the site and working more efficiently. So you'll see I'll hit next, and I just picked a, a basic example. Again, those controls are customizable as well, too. If you're on a mobile device like a phone or a tablet, uh, you can go ahead and use the camera icon. This will go right to your camera roll or your library. I'm on my laptop, so uh, I am just going to select one of these uh, construction stock photos, which are always a little bit goofy, but they're going to serve the purpose for you. If I want to go ahead and sort in here and see this, I can go ahead and select, I don't know, maybe a markup on that I want to put on, on this photo. I'm not sure what we're pointing out here. We can point out some, some items, what have you. We can use text. We can draw in here. We can do different shapes and symbols if we need. But the point is really easy to mark up and access these photos as they take those photos on the site, collect a signature from the foreman or superintendent or whoever this may be, we can customize that as well to who's completing that JHA. And then we can have attendees here as well. So I don't know, I'll pick Susan and Donald. If you're using foundation, again, nice piece, it's coming out of your foundation database. If not, we can upload those via CSV for you. But we can go ahead and continue to add those. And my favorite part about these, a lot of people say, well, I got a lot of employees. How's that going to work? The nice piece is, is it's a universal search. So as I do it, we can pair this list from 200 down to two or what have you uh, as we continue. So I'll go ahead, I'll submit that form as we go. And on the next page, you'll see I've submitted this form. It's all housed and completed in one area. So all of my completed JHAs are here. They're always accessible if you need to get them at any point in time, great. If you need, and this is this is what I see most commonly, hey, I, you know, uh, this Amarec West project that we're working on, they want to see all the JHAs before they, you know, before we get paid or what have you. You can pick them for a particular time frame. 
You can just pick everything from that job. You can pick, you know, based on who completed them, whatever. Sort and filter those. We can grab a, a number of these, download them, uh, email them off, send them off as needed. I always say we can kind of get into the quick, what I call the rough draft version here, right? This is the one that I just completed. It gives you all your information, but it's not, you know, it's not the best looking per se, but it works if you just want to see it. But we also have the ability with your name and logo up here, uh, this, would, this would be customized to you. We can go through and create a nice PDF that we can share um, with customers, general contractors, um, you know, other people that we're working on the job with, what have you, maybe subcontractors if, if we're doing the JHAs ourselves. So very flexible in that regard. And let's go ahead and take a look and see maybe from another example, we'll do um, a site evaluation, right? A site inspection, site audit, whatever this may be for you guys. Again, big yellow button to select it. I've selected my inspection. Uh, I don't want the service job. I'm gonna stay with this AMRAC job that we're doing here, great. Uh, we're gonna get back to this language select in a little bit, but just take note of that as we go right now. But again, these are fully customizable inspections. So maybe you guys have particular questions that you wanna ask, great. Um, the nice piece that I always use for an example here, like in fall protection, this is a small one that we've built. So this, this one's fairly limited. But just four questions, but you'll see and how this represents is once I select something, we can ask more questions. So we're not bothering them with questions that they don't need. We're not bothering them with questions that aren't relevant. We're keeping it really nice and focused on the team as we continue keeping them, uh, you know, on what's important to them. I mentioned the photo piece before, uh, snapping and add photos. We can add those types of elements to any of these forms for you. But the good example I always use, first aid kit, right? It's not on the site when we're doing this inspection, we got to address this. I can, from right here, I can go ahead and add a new corrective action. Pick my division. We can pre-populate these. We can type in here if we would like as well, great. Uh, we can assign this to a particular employee to address, right? Maybe I want to own this to make sure that I um, see the progress and if this is being completed. But right now we're gonna assign this to Susan. Awesome, nice and easy. Again, we can add those photos and mark them up like I showed you before. I'll go ahead and say, hey, Susan, we need this done before we step on the site tomorrow. This is, this is a, well, let's say a high hazard, right? High severity hazard, great. Now that will automatically notify Susan via email and within the application, letting Susan know that she's been assigned a corrective action and she needs to get that first aid kit um, from, the, from the head office. But it's not stopping me completing my form. I can continue on with what I'm doing and I don't have to worry about the logistics of passing that piece of information from one party to another. So let's jump out of here. Again, we can complete this form. There's a lot of things that we can do here. And you'll see those completed forms look just like what we did on the JHA. If I wanna grab these PDF, share, email, multiple of these, I can. I can jump into a quick one here, see what I got. I can PDF it to look almost the same as that JHA, that'll work for me too. Sort and filter by project. Uh, and we'll get to the reporting in a second. But the point is, is these work the same from form to form. You don't, you, you don't have to learn a different item for each different task. Whatever form or item that they're doing in the field, it works, feels, and uses the same way, which is really convenient, especially from an ease of use perspective. But let's take a look at those corrective actions. Where do those go? What are they doing? What happened, right? So Susan got a notification within her inbox and her email letting her know that she's been assigned a corrective action. Once she collects that, uh, she'll go through, she can, she'll most likely have this of just what's assigned to her and so forth, right? But you can go ahead and see here's all of the things that we can sort and filter and combine by. So this can help us report on what corrective actions are maybe assigned or open. Maybe I wanna see it by project, maybe you know, who it's assigned to, maybe somebody's you know, taking an impromptu leave and they have some, some items that, you know, assigned to them, we can go grab all those. Everything we need right here, again, add photos, she can mark it complete when she goes in here, put her notes, add photos to the completed one, what have you. And then we also have some automated reporting in here, which is really nice. So we get in here, we can see, you know what, maybe I pick six months just because I have more data in there. 
maybe we've we've noticed we've run into some more crane related deficiencies lately or maybe some housekeeping or whatever it may be helps us make proactive decisions before we run into an issue on the site um, you can see different you know charts as far as deficiency how we've been doing over time and then we can even filter all of this reporting down by maybe it's by project maybe it's by division uh, maybe it's by who it's assigned to so this item on the right hand side is really nice as far as keeping us um, engaged keeping us proactive whether it be by whatever metric we need we have all that information automatically populated for us right there so that's corrective actions again we can add corrective actions to maybe it's uh, an, an infraction notice maybe it's a vehicle or accident report we can add those to pretty much any of these forms in here if we need um, the accident report's actually a really good example here too, and we'll show you incident reports a little bit later. That's going to be more so focused on like OSHA recordables and things like that. But I like to show this report because it's a really good example of how these forms expand. Really nice and short. If I pick property damage uh, from a vehicle standpoint, well, uh, we want to get some more information. Great. Another vehicle was involved. Maybe you had a really busy day behind the wheel and you clipped three other vehicles. Well, we want to grab information on all those as well, right? So that's the nice piece here is these forms will continue to expand based on the inputs. It keeps your team focused on what they need to do. And the more focused they are, the safer they're generally going to be out in the field for you. The last piece that I like to show is like a vehicle or an equipment inspection. Uh, a lot of people, you know, ask if I'm doing DOT inspections, how's it going to be? Again, we got plenty of examples. Uh, we have plenty of templates, but if you have some, let us know. We can we can work those in here as well. But let's go ahead and add a new one. You'll see same yellow button, same process. This works for all the forms. I might do my pre-trip. I pick a particular vehicle in here. Great. Put in something like mileage. But the reason I show this in particular is if I mark something as unsafe during my inspection, an automatic notification is generated and submitted. Now we can select who that's going to go to, but especially for some folks that like, hey, I want our garage manager, our shop manager, maybe our safety team to get notified anytime we have this. Those are the types of notifications that we can create in here to save you time and effort. It's one thing to collect all this information as it is, right? But it's another thing to actually do something with it. It's another thing to actually get it to where it needs to go and people who can address it. So we're taking one of those steps out of your hand by, by handling that for you within the application. So I'm gonna jump ahead for a second since we're talking about equipment. The nice piece about equipment is in here, uh, oh, I'll pick the equipment inspection again. Now I'm picking documents, let's pick this, here we go. So um, we can go ahead and review what equipment's overdue. We can track you know, maintenance or inspection logs on here if we need. We can relate these pieces of equipment to projects, and jobs, employees. We can relate these pieces of equipment to each other. Really good example there is, hey, maybe this truck is related to this other truck or maybe it's related to a trailer. Once I inspect one, prompt us to inspect the other. Really easy for us to do and manage. And then I'll go ahead and say, you know, you can see down here we have some related equipment and what the status of it is. Also, when we get to a job, and I just showed you those corrective actions, from a job perspective, not only do you have helpful information like hospital address, uh, those corrective actions that are related to that job, uh, we can go ahead and see things like equipment related in here as well to see, hey, you know, this job, you know, has a a ladder that needs to be inspected or a Ford F-150, depending on how granular you want to get on these details. You can see all that. And then while we're in here, I always show this as well. You can also include documents. And here I have an example of a Genie lift. Uh, really nice for you to get in here, review maybe an operator's manual. Maybe it's a safe entry plan. Um, maybe it's some project related documents that you want the team to access. Perfect. We can put it right on the project. And on top of that, we also have a wide open document storage database, right? So if this is where you wanna put your safety manual, you wanna put other documents or what have you, you certainly could. This is wide open and uh, no storage fees. So that's really, really nice. You can put all of your safety information in one place. So we've hit forms, we've hit corrective actions. Let's get to toolbox talks, that's pretty popular. So you can add your own. We can create toolbox talks, add them in as part of the library that we have in here as well so you know you can go ahead put in english spanish whatever you might need to do 
but I'll go ahead and select this toolbox talk as a whole. Mm, let's say wire rope cable clips is what we want to review today. Great. I told you that I would mention this translate icon to you and we'd bring that up later. You've seen that a couple of times throughout the software, but I like to pick it here because there's a whole bunch of text. Uh, on the spot, we can translate from English to Spanish, Spanish to English. And the nice piece is, is we can set up users to be a English or Spanish speaking uh, default as well too. So this is really, really only going to get used for people who need to translate across a language barrier. People will be in their uh, in their native language more often than not based on those defaults. But anyway, I've selected wire rope cable clips. That's something that I want the team to review. I can hit the share icon, select the groups that I want to share with. I can schedule this as well as others out in advance, right? So that's a nice piece is I can say it's seven o'clock on the 27th. They're going to get a notification. All my foremen are going to get a notification of, um, you know, wire rope cable clips as their toolbox talks. They'll get that in their inbox. They'll also get that in their email and they'll get it at the date and time. It's not when you schedule it. If you give it to them right when they schedule it, they're going to ignore it. Uh, they're not going to remember to do it. They'll get it at the date and time that you selected. And then we'll be able to review that right in here too. So um, I know a lot of people do toolbox talks a whole bunch of different ways. If it gets to a situation in which, hey, I want them to be able to select their own toolbox talks, they can pick their own right from here too. You don't have to schedule it. Uh, when we go to this next step, again, big yellow button, select my project, review the toolbox talk with the team. Great. Once I go through that toolbox talk with the team, my signatures will work the same way. And people will say, well, what if I want each individual to sign in? Or what if I'm a GC and you know and I have some subcontractors on the site or what have you too? Not a problem. We can address both of those. It'll look a little bit different. It's going to look almost the same, but um, it might say subcontractor signature and we can have a signature. We could do it a number of different ways to facilitate it. Or if it's just individuals, it would just say signature and we would remove the second piece here too. So those toolbox talks, those are getting completed and saved just like the rest. Again, this is gonna look a lot like that JHA, that site inspection scene that we were reviewing as well. When we go through again, and you know, maybe we wanna sort it by project, whatever we need, great. But my the most requested or most used feature, I think regarding toolbox talks is this one right here, this reports. Again, it's one thing to give them the piece of paper or shoot them the email or give them the information they need. It's another to track and make sure it gets done. If you guys are doing that on paper right now, you know that these find their way to the the floorboards, uh, you know the you know the mats in the in, in your truck or what have you. You don't have to worry about any of that. As soon as they complete it, we can check and review, you know, how frequently they've been completed. We can set up a rule. Most people are doing these weekly. We can say, hey, they should administrators or foremen or you know whatever the position may be. We want them to do one per week. We can see how the team is doing hopefully better than this group, um, but I'm in here near the back. Great, I've done 66. I can see the dates in which I've completed them. Awesome, overachiever. Patrick, I can see the four that he's done. Great, uh, he missed a couple in there. Maybe I just wanna select, uh, maybe I just wanna select the, you know, two of the people or two of the people that didn't do them, great. Or I can just say, hey, anybody who hasn't completed their toolbox talk from right here, we can notify them and let them know you need to complete a toolbox talk hits their inbox in here and hits their email as well. If they need a little bit more of a nudge, maybe you wanna grab a, a manager or multiple managers for a group, you can notify them as well. And then you have a nice graph in here as well to show, um, I'll go ahead and pick myself. Um, I can go ahead and see my completion and my record as I can continue to go forward. And um, people use this a lot for incentive programs or what have you also. So this toolbox talk reporting, this works for everything, right? So if I want to do this for JHAs and maybe I want my foreman to complete these one per week day, we can set up a different role and rule for each form. And then we can go ahead, let's go to like JSEs, great. I can set up a different rule there. We can track and manage this all the same way. So that's the big three, uh, you know, corrective actions, forms, toolbox talks, things like that. As we keep rolling here on the SDSs, and this is a crowdsourced um, SDS library, so if we need to get in here, access an SDS, we can. 
If we need to search by something, we can too. I always use like Sherwin Williams because we're out of Cleveland here. Um, but you know, if I run into something maybe I can't find in the database from right here, you can request the manufacturer. We will reach out to that manufacturer. Um, we'll grab that product and uh, source it in the database for you. But most of the time, we'll grab your SDS library from you when you get going too to make sure that we have everything in there to begin with anyway. The next feature as we continue on is lessons. Now I show this lessons and certifications together most of the time. And the reason being is once these lessons are completed, they automatically populate the certification section. And I'll show you what I mean. So whether we're using these lessons, in this case, the safety HQ training, great. We might use this for a new hire orientation and onboarding, great. We can link them out to forms that they need to compile out, you know, they need to complete or what have you. Awesome. Maybe it's something a little bit more traditional, like this is a, I don't know, this is a safe, what is this, hazard communication training. Have them watch some videos, review some information, assign this out to the team. So, you know, we're making sure that they complete this and they stay updated on their training. Require them to take a quiz. And based on, you know, if they pass the quiz, they get through all that information that will automatically populate one of the certifications. So that's really nice in here in that once they've completed that certification, fantastic, it's automatically populated here. But you might be saying, well, you know, yeah, that's great, but we do a lot of trainings at, you know, a third party site or that we send them off elsewhere, or maybe you guys are union, you send them to the hall, do their training. Not a big deal, we can add it individually or we can bulk upload certifications as well. And we'll pop back over here and take a look. We also have a bunch of options in here also, if we wanna go ahead and say, hey, we wanna see who's gonna expire in the next 60 days on fall protection. I don't know if I have an example, I might have nobody and I don't, but you can go ahead and review all those items. In the near future, we're also gonna have some notifications here for you as well, letting you know that um, you know when somebody's gonna expire, they'll be automatically sent to the admin or whoever you wanna select on the team, letting them know, you know who's expiring in the near future. Another big feature that we see used on here as well is the uh, the photos of potentially cards. So again, you know how it goes. I know a lot of these, uh, a lot of the the team should have these cards on their person, but you know they 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 find a way to go missing from time to time. You have a nice consolidated backup here so that you can review these at any time. You always have them on your person if you get you know reviewed by OSHA or what have you, um, or you know maybe your GC or or who you're working with. Well, let's go in and take a look more particular. I wanna see Bill's trainings here as well. Okay, down here, he's got a whole bunch of trainings, great. I can share these with a QR code. I can email this off, or I can, with your name and logo, I can create a, or you could create a training certificate right here to share with somebody as you need it as well too. And we can do this across multiple employees. If you say you wanna just do one training type, what have you. We can, we can do the certifications and trainings a number of different ways, but the point is, is we have everything in one place so that you can track and manage it. And more importantly, it's, it's in the field with you too, if you need it, if you need to see who's available and who has what you need. As we work our way down here, these photos, I think this is the one that I just created. This is really kind of an admin area. This will show us the time and date this photo was created. This will take us to that particular form. But I really see this photo, you know, this photo item being used for people who just want to say, hey, let's just see on a particular project, I want to pop in and take a, a top-down view. You certainly could. We showed projects a second ago. Uh, we showed the workers tab uh, when we reviewed bills, uh, bill certifications. We reviewed equipment and we reviewed documents. So that leaves us as the last section here, which is incident reports. The nice piece on incident reports, and I won't bother you with the whole report here. But again, big yellow button to add it, really easy, really accessible. We can sort through, just like before, all of our completed uh, incident reports throughout the software. So we can go in any of these items and say, hey, you know, maybe I want to see by a particular employee or incident type or what have you. Great. If I want to go in, and I'm just going to go into a, a, an existing one here. If I want to review this, uh, let's go ahead and review. Uh, oh, yeah, let's go with this one. Yeah, yeah, okay, we got enough information. It's blank in a lot of places, but oh well. Um, so this one you can see, once I start this, uh, this, this incident report, 
this will notify uh, after the first set of completed questions, this will notify whether it be HR or safety, whomever, letting them know, hey, they need to get this completed or that an incident's occurred in the field, great. They will then prompt the next group, oftentimes, like I said, safety or HR, to fill out days away from work, all those classifications, the treatment information, all that kind of stuff. So the field team is filling out project, what happened, the basic information, and then it's prompting the rest of the team to fill out this, the rest of these items. But they're all here in one report that we can fill out and complete. We can PDF this incident report if we need. And the nice piece is, is once we've completed all these incident reports, hopefully you don't have many, um, but I can go ahead and I can review these in an automated report. So I'll just pick like, I don't know, last six months. You can see injuries by count. I can export this data out if I want to play with it separately. I can see what we're, what we're having more issues with, less issues with, great. Again, I can sort this by project, maybe by division, by company, whatever I might need here too. And this right here, generate the OSHA 300A report. So assuming you're collecting all these you know, all these incidents in Safety HQ, you can populate that OSHA 300A, which I'm sure a lot of you guys have either just recently done or you're doing right now, um, you know, so that you can report it. The other question I get all the time on here is, well, is this going to go to OSHA? No, it's your information. This is just populating the report on your behalf, and it's staying within uh, on the machine that you're creating it on. So. Don't have to worry about that going off to OSHA or going anywhere that you need. Uh, you can review all that information and it is yours uh, in particular. So speaking of access to information, that's the, that's the other piece that I like to mention here kind of as we wrap up. We do one company license, which is really beneficial, especially you know, considering we're in construction, right? Uh, we're specific to the trades, we're specific to general contractors, we're specific to construction. You guys are adding and removing employees all the time. The last thing you wanna do is add and remove licenses, do this on a one-off, two-off basis. We charge you one company license. You can give access to all of your employees, just a handful of foremen, what have you, however you need it. And then the nice piece is, is we can, we can allow certain people to see certain things. Maybe you just want the field team to see SDSs and documents, great. Maybe you want, when you get into the forms, you only want project managers to see forms that they've completed and you don't want them to see other people's projects. Great, you can do that. So the flexibility and access permissions are extremely flexible in here. We can set it up however you need. Uh, we can make sure that it fits for you. But with that, I will check and see if we have any questions. Um, does the app send reminders for push notifications for the corrective actions? What happens if it's not completed by the deadline? So we can set up a bunch of notifications throughout the software. That's a great question. We can set up notifications throughout the software, but the one thing we want to be aware of is sending too many notifications, right? Uh, if we send too many notifications, it will overload them. Again, I showed you from the equipment, like key items we send notifications on. We can send a whole bunch we just want to probably review that on a one-off, two-off basis to make sure that it makes sense. Because if you send too many notifications, the team begins to ignore them. Um, but we have a lot of flexibility on how we send notifications, who they send them to, and who gets what to. But really good question. Uh, that would be that would be everywhere, right? We can do that. Um, maybe it's not just on the corrective action side. Maybe it's on any of these forms. People ask, hey, can you know can we send a notification anytime this form's completed? Well, yeah, but I don't know if you get a form every time a JHA can, is completed, you tend to ignore all of the key items in there as far as, you know, in, incidents occurred or maybe this requires attention or what have you too. So I got a couple more questions popping in here. Um, I don't know that we're going to be able to oh, see here. I don't know that I'm going to be able to get to all of them uh, while we're here. I know we're already like three minutes over the time. Let me go, you know, just, just from here, I had that up on the, uh, on, on the previous presentation, but please feel free to reach out to me, edv at foundationsoft.com. Uh, give us a call at 800-246-0800. My name is Eric Fittardi. Uh, again, I'd be happy to schedule an individual call with you guys if you need. I'm sure we'll be sending out an email after this to give you some more information, um, but we'd love to answer some questions. Either shoot me an email if you want. Uh, we can talk price. We can talk, um, and that's based on your company size, I should say, too. We can talk price, we can talk individual questions, whatever you guys need, just let me know and I'd be happy to help. But other than that, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys joining for the webinar today and have a great day.